to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adults ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Michael Joseph Ferguson. I hope you are all doing well. In today's episode, we will be talking about courage, finding the courage to take action. So it's a broad topic. We've seen movies about this. We've read tons of books about it. Sometimes it just becomes such a, a cliche, and we just hear it constantly. And we're like, well, what, is, what does courage actually mean? It becomes, it's kind of like just in the background, it's background noise. But most meaningful decisions in life involve courage. They involve specifically facing your fears and getting out of your comfort zone. So how does this relate with us? So many of us hunter types, people who have ADHD challenges, have experienced setbacks that over time may be keeping us from taking the actions we need to take because we've gotten hurt, we have rejection sensitivity. There's all these things that keep us safe and protected in not taking the steps we need to take to grow. And so when we have courage and face our fears, we can improve our lives, we can get the support we need, we can grow our work life if that's what you're focusing on, and also just moving towards what we're most passionate about. All of those involve facing a fear or fears and doing it anyway. Again, these are cliches, but it's true, right? If you don't face your fear, you stay stuck. And especially, and this is what we'll talk about a little later, if you are in a rut, chances are courage is what you need right now. Courage is your ally. And we're also going to unpack the brain chemistry of courage, understanding how to hack our brain in such a way that it reduces our fear response and gives us more ability to face our fears and move through them. Okay, just one quick announcement. We're having our annual book sale. So now through November 20th, you can pick up the print copy of The Drummer in the Great Mountain at a significantly lower price than the Amazon price. Uh, you can just go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com and order your copy of the book. And if you're overseas and the shipping charges are a little much, this might offset the cost a little bit, make it a little easier for you to order the book. So if you're interested, go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com. Okay, so let's talk about courage. So let's define what are some of the challenges that you may be facing right now where courage may be your ally, maybe what you're needing right now. So as I mentioned in, in the intro, many of us get stuck in a rut. Over time, our fears start to get the best of us. Maybe we've taken some actions in the past and they haven't worked out, or you've been embarrassed, or something happened where over time you're starting to contract. Okay, and I know I've just worked with so many of you now. I know this is a very common occurrence. And so to recognize that you're stuck is the first step or that there's some action that you need to take that you're not taking because you're afraid of the implications of it or how that's going to potentially affect you. And as you analyze the situation, you know that part of that is just you're afraid. 
Okay, so courage involves facing your fear in some way. So because we have rejection sensitivity, because we're sensitive beings in general as hunter types, uh, maybe when we're younger, when we haven't been knocked around a bit <laughs> by life, it's a little easier to just jump out and do stuff. I know I've done, when I think back, I don't know how I've even survived my uh, late teens and 20s. I just there's so many times where I should have been, I should be dead. <laughs> so I know that that wasn't about me being courageous. That was about me having no idea of the potential uh, consequences of my actions, right? So as we get older uh, and we've experienced life and we've been knocked around a bit, then we start to build up, oh, okay, I can't, like, if I do that, I'm, it, it, you know, that could be really painful, um, so we start to contract, we start to move into comfortable ways of living, which in some ways is beneficial and maybe is keeping you alive, but on another level, it's keeping you from living your life fully. And, uh, it's helpful. Uh, and this is what we'll talk about today of just how do we, and even in small ways, face our fears on a daily, weekly basis so that we can build that muscle of courage so that we can slowly move our life forward in a positive direction instead of staying in a rut. So the word courage comes from the Latin root core, meaning heart. Okay. And there's some very specific qualities of courage that I want to define here as we move towards how you would then apply this in your life. So the first piece is it involves some kind of choice. You're deciding to do something. It's a, and as I'm defining it here, it's you're deciding to do something knowing that it will move your life forward, but it also involves facing fear. So that's it could be fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of people seeing you fail, fear of getting out of your comfort zone, fear of being seen as you are. So it involves some kind of fear. You're going to face that fear in some way, which means that there's going to be anxiety and anxiety that you're going to have to be present for as you move towards whatever it is. So as I've reflected back on my life, the most meaningful, rewarding, life-changing decisions that I've made involve some form of facing a fear. So let's talk a bit about the brain chemistry of courage. How does courage actually work in the brain? So to examine this, we need to look at why we have fear in the first place. Like, what's it about? Why do we have it? And what's happening in the brain? So there's one key part of the brain that seems to be in control of processing fear, and that's the amygdala. That's something we've talked about in the past. So as a reminder, the amygdala is an old part of our brain that is involved with fight or flight. It's the mechanism that has kept our species alive for millennia. It has kept us from being eaten by the tiger or falling off the cliff. So there's a man named Dr. Barry, who's an Irish psychologist who specializes in the amygdala and treating people with panic attacks. And he calls the amygdala the gunslinger. It has a hair trigger, and when it witnesses a potential threat, it goes off. And goes off meaning that it cues the brain to trigger a fight or flight response, which means that adrenaline and cortisol get pumped through your system. The brain is saying either you fight or you run. It's one or the other. Now, the key thing in all of this is when it witnesses a potential threat. The key word here is potential. This part of our brain is quite dumb. And in treating panic attacks, Dr. Barry found that the therapy was quite simple. Allow yourself to feel the fear without physically moving. When you don't physically move when the amygdala goes off and you don't die or nothing negative happens to you, it learns, okay, this is no longer a threat. And the trigger goes down. It doesn't completely go away, but the reaction goes down. And so after a while, as you continue to face your fear, and I've had personal experience with it, the, the panic attacks start to quiet down because you no longer are in a threatening situation and your brain knows, oh, okay, wait a minute, I've been through this and I survived, therefore I might trigger a little bit of anxiety, but not what happened before. So the key is this. It's the same with any kind of fear. 
when we face our fear, the anxiety gets reduced. When you face a fear and you move through it and you have nothing bad happened to you, the anxiety gets reduced. When we run away from something, the fear gets stronger. So that's how the amygdala works on the other side. When it says, okay, here's the threat, it's happening right now, and you get that cortisol and you physically move, or you you pulled away from that experience in some way, the amygdala goes, okay, we did it. We saved you. We're going to make sure this is even stronger next time because we know this saved your life. So it's the old adage of when you don't face your fears, they get stronger and more powerful. It's absolutely true on a biochemical level. So the other element to this is practicing meditation and mindfulness has been scientifically documented to literally shrink the amygdala. So it turns out in order to hack your brain to have more courage, meditation and mindfulness practice on a regular basis is part of the answer. And I'll leave a link in the description of this episode to my episodes on mindfulness and building a meditation practice. So courage is a muscle you build by exercising it. So by facing smaller fears on a daily, weekly basis, you get the courage to surmount bigger fears and move your life forward in a positive direction. And it's so you don't have to take on the biggest fear in your life in order to feel like you're exercising your courage muscle. It involves small things like what can I do today that's going to be like, oh, it's just going to move me forward a little bit that I maybe maybe reach out and make that phone call or make a decision to cancel something so you can focus on something you really care about or dress in a certain way and just not be afraid of what people think of you because it's your true self and you just want to express yourself in that way. Whatever it is, courage is a muscle you build by exercising it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a huge thing. It could just be a small act of courage. So what got me onto this theme of courage uh, came from an experience I had recently. So I want to share that with you because it was kind of the crux of, of this podcast episode. My birthday is October 18th. I just had a birthday. Cuesta every year gets me a birthday card, and each card uh, over the last four or five years has had an animal on it. And so if you're familiar with indigenous wisdom, each animal has a certain quality or characteristic that it represents to a particular culture. So the previous couple years, we she got me one with a bear, and bear has a very specific, there's a whole storyline around bear energy. Um then she got me Wolf, which is all about teaching. It's being a teacher. And this year she got me a card and I looked at it and it scared me. <laughs> and it was a, a tiger. And I'm not afraid of tigers at all. Like, it's not like I've never faced a tiger, but it's not like one of my fears. But for some reason I went, mm, okay. And then I looked it up and one of the represents it, representations of tiger is um, courage, and facing your fears. And I went, mm, okay, got it. And so that was like the morning of my birthday. And so for my birthday this year, we went up to Big Sur. We actually went up to Cambria, California, and then drove up to Big Sur. So one of my favorite places on the planet. I've driven the one from Cambria to Big Sur seven or eight times in my life. Just one of my favorite places on earth. I've never had a fear of driving the one. Some people get really concerned because it's a very windy road, runs along the coast, but it's just gorgeous. So as I got about a quarter of the way up, I started to have a bit of a panic attack. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I had to explore it for a second. Like, why am I panicking about this? And it was the fear of getting stuck on that road and not being able to get out. So to give you some context, about five years ago, when my mom was sick with cancer, she was in the kind of the last stages of that, uh, I was very stressed out. And I had an experience where I was stuck on the five freeway between San Clemente and, and uh, Oceanside. And there's no turnouts because that's where the military base is. And there was some accident and all the cars were backed up. And people were freaking out because there was no wind and we were all breathing in exhaust fumes and the car, there was no movement that we were just stuck. It was a parking lot. And that was a very traumatic experience. It was very hard on me emotionally. And when I finally got off the freeway, I was just like, I was shaking because of all of the other 
anxiety that I was going through, it would just took me over the edge. And so in this situation, this was the trauma, this was the event that got triggered, that triggered the fear, triggered the anxiety, triggered the panic attack. I got about a quarter way up and I could feel the panic coming in and I went, okay, I have a decision to make right now. Either I turn around and it's fine. I can spend the rest of my vacation just lounging in Cambria, which is a beautiful coastal town and I can just enjoy myself. Or I know how beautiful Big Sur is. If I just keep going, um, I'm going to be really grateful I did. So I was like, okay. I, I believe I found a stop. I stopped for a second, caught my breath and went, okay, I mentioned it to Quest. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm choosing to go through. And so how I dealt with it was I've learned over time when I'm facing a fear like this and both metaphorically and also dealing with panic attacks that you don't try to think way out into the future. You think, what is the next milestone? So in my brain, I thought, okay, how I handle this is I will get to, I looked at the map on my phone. I said, okay, the next major spot where I can stop and take a breath is about a half hour away. And there's really no other turnout. So like you're on it, you're on these windy roads and you got to just keep going. So I said, okay, I'm going to, that's, I'm going to get to that place and I'm going to take a break, stretch, catch, catch my breath and then I will then set my next milestone. I'll stop, take a break. And that's what I did. And I know for some of you, this is like, this is, you, it's an irrational fear. But when you're in it, there's no way to turn it off, really. You just have to slowly move your way through the fear as you go through it. So I, I just kept going. I said, okay, the next milestone is this. Got back on the road, drove there, um, took a breath got out, stretched a little bit, said, okay, now I'm, I'm going to go to the next place. And then as I was driving up, of course, there was construction. So <laughs> one of the fears that I had of being stuck on the road happened. There, like was, it was now down to one lane and I had to wait for cars to go by. And um, again, in my brain, it's like, oh, this is very serious. You're going to get stuck here. And, and the panic starts to kick in. But I thought, okay, wait, waited through it. And because I took it in small steps, after a while, it, 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 the fear started to relax a little bit. Your brain starts to go, okay, I'm safe. And by the time I got to Big Sur, I was fairly relaxed. It was still, I could still feel the adrenaline, but I was okay. So the reward from that for that, because I could have chosen to not take in the road and just gone back, that was a completely valid option, um, is that I pulled into... Uh, Pfeiffer Big Sur State Park. I don't know if you've ever been up there. So that's the south end of the Redwoods. So the Redwoods extend up all the way up the coast. Um, and then, of course, up in Arcata, that's where like the big Redwoods are. But down south, that's where the, the Redwoods start. And I pulled in to the campground, which I've gone to many times. And this is the first time I've ever had this experience where I was in a... a astounding nature spot. And I was literally moved to tears. And I've heard people say that and like, yeah, I've been to beautiful locations. I lived on Kauai for a long time. It's like, I've seen beautiful locations. I was literally in tears. It would like this, the, there was like a chorus of bird songs happening and these giant majestic redwoods. And it was just awe inspiring. The feeling of elation was directly connected to me facing the fear. So when I think about workshop participants, coaching clients, um, most times when I watch them make decisions in their lives that really move them forward, there's always some fear that they're going to have to face. So recently, I have one of my coaching clients that made a decision with his girlfriend to leave their comfortable apartment, buy a van, and travel the country. And they were... I mean, it's whenever I talk to him, I'm like, wow, it's like you can hear in his voice, he's a different person because he made that decision. But, you know, there's challenges when you make a decision like that, you're still on the road, there's going to things that are going to come up. And I always check in with him and go, okay, do you think that was still the best decision? And he's always like, no hesitation, definitely. Now, I want to make a distinction here between facing your fears, taking a leap, and being impulsive. Those are two different things. So being impulsive is you don't think it through. 
you you're not reflecting on it you're not taking into account the possible risks and then you're making a decision that's going to potentially hurt you and hurts hurt others that's not what i'm suggesting what i'm suggesting is if you are in a space where you know there's actions that you need to take in order to grow your life and you're not taking them because you're afraid based on past failures that's where courage comes in impulsiveness is about not reflecting what's at all and just jumping into something and then later going oh i didn't really think that through two different worlds so there's different kinds of courage so there's the courage to be yourself so to just have the confidence to just embrace the fact that you are the way you are with challenges and all and still honoring yourself valuing yourself and this for many of us this is a big challenge right because people around you have maybe criticized you for being how you are and there's always room for growth but at the same time there's still you owning who you are as a human being as something of value and that takes courage there's another courage of seeking support so if you are feeling like you've been stuck for a long time and you really need support and you haven't reached out to a coach, to a therapist, that involves courage. That involves getting out of your comfort zone. Also the courage to seek support if you are if you are struggling with an addiction. Many of us hunter types struggle with addiction. And many times we, on our own willpower, cannot overcome that addiction. We need support from someone else. So the courage to seek support, to support you in overcoming an addiction, that is real courage. I have many listeners that are 12-steppers, and all of you know that there was a point of courage where you had to make a decision to reach out for support, and you did it, and it changed your life. Uh Another courage is just the courage to step out of your comfort zone. Maybe there's an action you need to take with your business that you're afraid to do or a business that you want to start that you've been wanting to do for a while or a project that you want to start on, but you feel like, oh, I've blown it in the past. Um, hopefully, this at least this podcast and the book has been helpful to you in, in learning about ways to approach things differently so that you can have more success going, th- going into new ventures. Uh, So the courage to step out of your comfort zone. Again, that could be a small day-to-day thing. You may just look today, and I'll give you an exercise in a second, but what are the small areas of courage that you need to summon to overcome some challenges you've had over the past couple weeks? Another kind of courage is the courage to stand up for yourself. So many of you have people that have continually crossed a boundary with you, that you have not confronted them on it, you've allowed it to happen, And how you know that has occurred is you will have an incessant negative inner dialogue about that person or about you. It it usually goes both ways. You're angry at that person. You're also angry at yourself, but you haven't confronted them. That is another form of courage. And that is establishing a boundary. This is the boundary. When you said that, it did not meet my need for respect. And in whatever the situation is, you need to set a boundary. And if they cross it again, there's consequences. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, if you're in a rut, courage is your ally. So that's the good news. The good news is you know what you need to do. It's simple. If you feel like you're in a rut, courage is the solution. There's some form of facing a fear that you need to approach. And it's small steps, so it doesn't have to be a big thing. So going back to my story about being driving up to Big Sur, it's about small steps. What are the milestones? What is the one thing that I can do? What's the small fear I can face now that will move me in the direction that I want to go in? What's the next milestone? For me, it was very literal. I was like, okay, I'm driving up the coast, and I like, what's the next place I can pull off? Uh, So you can both have courage, but also make it as easy on yourself as possible. So you don't have to fight the giant constantly. And that's not what I'm I'm suggesting. It's about finding ways in your weekly life, setting setting a, a bar for yourself saying, okay, I'm going to face that and and this is going to move my life forward, defining what it is and then choosing to do it. If you choose to do it and you follow through, no matter how it works out, you win. 
it's a win because you faced your fear. Even if it doesn't work out great, that's okay. You faced your fear, and that was a step in the right direction. So to wrap up, for us hunter types, many of us have been knocked down countless times. And when we try something and it doesn't work out, especially because of our ADHD challenges, it's easy to give up. It's easy to contract and pull back in again. Hopefully this podcast has given you some tools of support to more easily navigate those situations, but we're always a work in progress. You will never have it all together. So it's important to exercise courage regularly. So going back to the hunter type concept, one of the hallmarks of a successful hunter in a tribe going back to ancient times was courage. It was what set them apart in the tribe. And remember, courage is subjective. So only you know what courage is for you. If I told my story about driving up to Big Sur to my 21-year-old self, uh, he would be like, what? What's the big deal? It's no big deal. You're just driving up the coast. You're totally safe. But as I've gotten older and I've gotten knocked around a bit and have dealt with panic attacks, it's a whole, that, that was real courage to decide to keep going. And going back to what I said earlier, I can definitely credit regular mindfulness practice, regular meditation as giving me the awareness I needed in those moments when I felt most stuck to be able to think my way through it, internally talk my way through it so that I wasn't just in reaction. So I want to leave you with an exercise. So take a moment, I'm going to read the exercise to you, and I want to encourage you to hit pause on on this and actually write something down, okay? So the exercise is very simple. The question is, what is one act of courage you can take this week that will move your life forward? Now take a moment and examine what you wrote. So maybe you listed four or five things. I want you to take a look at those and assess which one is within reach. It doesn't feel like it's too big, but it's enough to feel like you're going to move your life forward in some way. And my challenge to you is in the next week, take that action. Within one week of listening to this episode, take that action. So I hope that was helpful. Again, I'm going to leave some links in the episode description of some other podcast episodes you might want to check out. And uh, as a reminder, we have our book sale going on between now and November 20th, 2022. So if you want to get a discount on the print book, go over to drummerinthegreatmountain.com, click the purchase link. And until next time, be well. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about the book, The Drummer and the Great Mountain, visit drummerandthegreatmountain.com. To join us on social media, click the links at the top of the homepage. Help us spread the word. We're a small press and reviews really help. If you've been enjoying the podcast or the book, consider writing a review on iTunes, Amazon, Goodreads or your podcast app. If you're new to the podcast and want to quickly get up to speed on the concepts we discuss, check out our free five-day mini course. Visit drummerandthegreatmountain.com forward slash mini course. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover on future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please send us an email at info at drummerandthegreatmountain.com.